G'day guys, my name is Nick. Welcome to the channel. I'm here in London, United Kingdom, in Black Horse, at Black Horse Lane Atelier with Han Ates, who is the founder and owner of Black Horse Lane Atelier, which is London's biggest and only jeans factory. How's it going? Great. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Nick. <laughs> Thank you for having me. My God, all the way from New York yeah, to here. Right. Yeah, and I was born in Australia. So that's basically a long trip. My God, you're confusing me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I learned about Black Horse through some mutual friends and I really wanted to come here and just explore the place uh, and just get a sense for how this place came to be. It's, it's sure. entirely unique in, uh, in London uh, and it's just kind of unique on its own. Um, what what led to the creation of this jeans factory? Well, I would say everything started in this factory. I bought this factory about 26 years ago and we were making uh, tailored jackets and we were employing about 110 people here. So what happened at the time I was 26, young, ambitious, wanted to make lots of money and wanted to learn a lot as well. But around the world, by that time, it was late 90s. Production, especially in UK, I don't know in the United States, but in, in the late 90s, production started to go cheaper countries, third world countries. And I followed that trend. And what happened in 2000, 2001, I stopped making garments in this factory, then went offshore. So 2004, 2005, customers said, we want cheaper. I went, I followed that and went to China this time. Mm -hmm. So two different countries I changed. So I was going further from East Europe, Eastern Europe. I went to Far East. And by 2007, I was really uh, properly trading in China. So further I went from this factory, I felt disconnected to London. I felt disconnected to my family because most of the time I was uh, trading in, in China, I was away from the city that I loved. I, I'm a proper Londoner, I love London. I love everything London offers to me. You had a motivation for opening this factory here and a large part of that was to be close to your family. But there's yes. also a, a grander philosophy to this operation that is to make more, make clothing more ethically and also to bring manufacturing and jobs uh, yes. to the United Kingdom. Yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Going back to the beginning of my story, it's I felt disconnected to the community I lived in, which was London. I was disconnected to the family that I, I had so when I came back uh, after selling my interest in, in China, I came back, I opened a local restaurant. Within one year of that, uh, I started to know my neighbors because they, were, they became my clients. In, I lived in the area for 22 years. I didn't know any neighbors, but within one year of opening a restaurant, I started to reconnect with the community that I lived in. Okay, but when you run a fine dining restaurant, you are not in charge of the creative uh, driving seat. I was missing my creativity. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, the problems with the denim industry at large that you are hoping for Black Horse Lane Atelier to, to, to help to solve or at least contribute to revenue? I mean, one of them is the making. If you take any denim, and if you, I mean, your audience, I would suggest them look into their, their inside their uh, denim, inside their jeans to see how it's made. They, you will find out lots of unfinished, unfinished threads, badly made. So that's one of the main uh, problems of uh, jeans today. And the other problem is quality of the cotton, the quality of the fabric. Uh, because traditionally, workwear has been cheap. There are so many political reasons for that. One of them was historically slavery. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, if you look at that and 200 years later or 100 years later, we changed that into a different form and shape and, and we are still after cheap labor. But uh, demand is incredibly high. I mean, I would say more today's uniforms are the jeans these days everybody wears jeans yeah 
uh, with demand being high, uh, in order to get the cheaper, cheapest possible garment to the to the consumer, we go further away and we we use cheap labor basically. But with that, of course, that that quality gradually what we do we accept that as the norm so at black horse then we try to change that mm -hmm. so you point to quality issues as a, a pervasive problem in the denim industry like stuff like uh, unfinished threads like weak material uh difficulty in tracing where it's from that kind of stuff uh the, that's that's all like definitely very important, especially for people who want to get more uh, more value for their money. You pointed to I think a lot of people call it the great outsourcing, like what happened throughout the 20th century where production moves overseas and the issues with that. And when we're talking specifically about jeans in this instance, you're saying that we you found that uh, quality is decreased as more well misthreads, construction is worse, the jeans are less durable, people get less value for their money, and and so on. Quality aside, and these are all excellent points and perhaps of more practical concern to a lot of people, but could you speak a bit to the ethical concerns of the denim industry as well? Because as I've been exploring that uh, here in London, there's been a lot of talk about everything from uh, difficulty sourcing the cotton to the sustainability of the fabrics themselves, to the labor involved. Like what are, what are some of the ethical uh, issues surrounding jeans that are of most import to you? One of the major issues for us is, as consumers, we want, we are so used to getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper garments. And if you look at last 25 years, the inflation is higher, but general clothing prices are going down. So there is a big gap. And in order to achieve that, you outsource your factories in places like China, in places like Bangladesh, in places like uh, Pakistan. But the workers in those countries, they work in terrible conditions, so that's not ethical. So that's one of the problem. How do we change that? How do we reverse that? Secondly, cheaper that it becomes a garment, uh, quality goes down, and with that it becomes a throwaway item, okay? So at Black Horse Dane, we give lifetime repair guarantee, for example. We want our customer to use their garments as long as possible. So two things happen with that. One, when you start using something long enough, you build memories with it. So you are emotionally connected to the item. And also denim is one of those items that older it gets, better it becomes. Luckily. So we use, yeah, exactly. We use that and we make sure that we give lifetime of the jeans repairs so that you as a consumer could use it 10 years, 15 years. So you build memories with that. With that, you don't throw the item easily. So you are, we are trying to help that reduce the throw away culture. And of course, the other way is for us, important thing is we want to connect to our customers. So when the customer brings their garment to us, we ask them, so how did you do it? What did you do? It? What, what's that tear about? Because we all have different lifestyles. Trust me, when customer brings their repairs, they all come from different places and they always have stories. So we connect, reconnect with our customers. That's really important. Today's culture, today's uh, big fashion industry, they are disconnected to their customers. When speaking about things like, uh, you know, the creep of globalization and so on, there's often an emphasis in these discussions about jobs leaving countries as well. Like in the in the US, and I imagine it's similar here when we come to, when it comes to things like uh, mills, uh, but also you know, you know uh, mines and oil and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of talk about jobs leaving the country. Is that also a big concern in, in like the garment industry? Like is, is bringing labor back to the UK a big emphasis here or is that not as big a I, concern? I, I want to be realist and we cannot compete with Bangladesh in terms of labor prices. We do need uh, more affordable garments in this country, definitely. 
But what we do need is also is change people's uh, mindset because when an industry leaves this country, it's not just the labor lives, it's know-how lives. And I mean, we are talking about being crafts. And if you think about a city, one of the most attractive about the city is their theaters, their opera houses, their museums. But if you look back of those industries, you have thousands of makers supporting those, you know, costume makers, uh, carpenters, you know, we are supporting those amazing uh, establishments. If we lose our know-how, we won't be able to find any cost costume makers, for example, for fashion or for film industry or for theaters, for operas. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we retain our know-how and we can only retain it with smaller production units in the cities. Cotton is a plant like grape, okay? If in order to mass produce cotton, you use lots of pesticides, lots of chemicals, lots of water in order to get plentiful. But in that also automation is uh, there as well. So cotton is made out of long stems. So in the automation and the quality of the uh, production, you lose the integrity of that long stem and the strength. But equally, there are farms, there are mills, they use amazingly good quality cotton. So when you make your jeans from this good quality, it becomes expensive. It's a slower production. We use organic or biodynamic cotton most of the time. And, and when you make that into denim, it becomes a stronger material. So therefore you use it longer because it's a stronger material. Okay. So like, does that does make the, sense? Yeah, yeah. So, so where so, does this denim come from? A lot of Turkish denim? Traditionally, Italians. But the denim right, we use here, I mean. We use Japanese, Italian, and some Turkish. Okay. But mainly Japanese and Italian we use. Okay. Because we really believe that they make one of the best denim fabric in the world, those two countries. And you make... Uh, you make jeans under your own label, Black Horse Lane Ateliers. You've, so, got, you've got a store in, in the... Again, in the because we want other designers to make garments in London, mm -hmm. uh, we work three ways. One is we have our own uh, label, Black Horse Lane Atelier as a label. And we have a small shop in King's Cross. Have you been to the shop? No, I haven't made it out yet. Come on! Sorry, I know. <laughs> so we sell it in our shop. We also sell it online. And that's one revenue we, we get. The other one, we do double collaboration with double labels. Mm -hmm. Do you know Bell Stuff, for example? Yeah. We, we made garments for Bell Stuff with Black Horse Lane and Bell Stuff label together. Great. Okay. So that's collaboration. Yep. And we also make for other smaller designers. That's really important for us. We want a bit like the craft beer. We want more people making their own labels, their own garments in London, mm -hmm. so that we complement each other rather than being the competitor to each other. Sure. So you get like British uh, British designers, like they'll, they'll come to you with designs and you'll help them pick out a fabric and then you'll make the, the jeans with the Absolutely, yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's not just jeans, right? It's jackets and... We make jackets, shirts, jeans, skirt. I mean, at the back, at this moment, we are working with jackets, yeah. We started uh, running master classes here, for example. We, we did run about 16, 17. With the COVID, we stopped. And we're going to reintroduce that uh, master classes. We teach people how to make jeans. And the idea is if we teach people how to make jeans, there will be more people making jeans. So that uh, makers, the community will be much bigger. How is it in New York? There are some small shops in New York. I mean, there's, uh, there's Left Field. Glenn's Denim is a very small one in New York. But generally, I've been looking around. Uh, th there are a couple of jeans makers I've been trying to get in touch with, but it's, I don't think there's anything like this hmm. in, in New York. Well, I mean, my message would be to New Yorkers. I would love to come and help anybody setting up a place like this. Great. All right, we'll so have to, that we'll put the call out. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that we will have much smaller production units in every city. Yeah, I don't think you'll have trouble finding people in Brooklyn who, who want to open a jeans factory. Yeah. It's a dream, dream of like half the guys out there, yeah. Well, I'm willing to share my knowledge. <laughs> Great, all right.
what are some like issues that you found with making uh, all these fabrics in London itself? Like what about this was more difficult than you were intending? What about this is harder than if you were just to outsource it? Yeah, I think one of the most difficult uh, bit for us is a smaller production unit, smaller uh, workshop, finding uh, skilled workers because there we are really busy. We've been really busy for the last six years, the day we started. There are more work than we can produce, but we can't have uh, skilled workers here because that know-how drains. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So what are your hopes for the, the future of uh, Black Porcelain Ateliers and the, you know, the denim industry? In well, we are on a very interesting project. We just uh, going to launch our R&D uh, department around sustainable washing with University Arts London. So my dream uh, for Black Coast Lane to become uh, a proper commercial uh, business with lots of students, lots of designers coming in and out. And because when you're at, in a school, you learn only the theory, but you don't really learn what happens in real life. So I want to bridge that gap with, with opening our doors to universities here. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's a good sustain. You're sustainable from every direction, I guess. I mean, we want to be part of this community. We want to be in the community, connected to the community. And the only way to do that with open doors. I love it. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you very much for letting me into this really interesting business and into the, the mind behind it as well. I really appreciate it. This is really, really interesting. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, oh. and I hope it was useful. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>